Right? Now, I'm going to use this as a basis uh, to cover the point that I want to uh, make clear to you all and think of to point out the important things that you should be aware of. Uh, you remember if uh, I've given you a test, which is a test view on analysis of frame, getting the reaction forces. Okay. But in the exam, it will cover also getting bending moment diagram and shear force diagram. Okay. So this is the first one I'm going to go through with you so that you are familiar with the solution process. And the second one is on a beam example, and also it, it covers the checking of statical determinacy part, where I use an example of frame asking you to check the Asking you to show that the degree of statical indeterminacy is changing from three to one as we introduce hinges in this question number two, part A. So these are the things that you expected to know. And also the main one of the main topics that you will be tested will be drawing of a bending moment diagram, shear force diagram of beam and also sketch the qualitative deflected shape. So using these uh, test questions, I'm going to go through with you the important points that you should be aware of. Okay. I'm going to use the whiteboard directly, so you, this one I will sketch again. So, Now, if the main thing that you are expected to know, so those joining on online class, if you can't see anything I write, please let me know. I might be writing out of the whiteboard okay, if I can't hear you because I know where I should write here and there. Un until where? Oh, yeah. Oh, Abba? It's about. Uh, this is not about it. It's okay. Important thing you can see, class, you should be able to see. Yeah? Okay. Now I'm going to write if it is out of the range, then please let me know. Okay. Can you see class the writing? Is it, is it big enough? Is it clear enough? Or is it too small, too big? Are you able to all to see? Anyone can't see? Yeah. If you cannot see, please let me know. Yeah? Now, in for, for the exam, I think you have three hours, three hour examinations, and then you have part A and part B to, to answer. And part A, there are some compulsory questions, and then part B, you can choose. So for my part, I have two questions. One is on beam, and the other one is on frame. Beam and frame, which is uh, the part that I cover. So, so these are the things that I will go through with you today. What are the important things? Now here, sorry, we cannot on too much of the aircon because it will become noisy the other side. Okay. Are you okay? Because it will, it will later become like summer. Yeah. Okay, now you are in. So here, beam and frame, this is the things that you are expected to be able to to, to understand is checking of. Plus those who are online, you cannot cannot see, cannot see, or writing is too small, please let me know. Yeah? Checking of statical determinants. Okay. So checking of statical determinacy means you have to do some checking and you have to get alpha. What is the number of unknown forces? And the other one is beta. What is the number of equilibrium equations? Okay. So based on this, you have to Make conclusion is alpha equal to beta, then this is 
statically determinant. Okay. And if alpha greater than beta, which is number of unknown forces greater than number of equilibrium equation, this is statically indeterminate. Okay. And if it is statically indeterminate, don't stop here, then you have to give what is this a degree of statical indeterminacy. What is the degree of statical indeterminacy? You will have to state. So if alpha is four, for example, beta is one, then uh, it's four minus four. Uh, alpha is alpha is four, beta is three. So this i become four minus three is equal to one. So degree of statical indeterminacy must always be a positive number. It cannot be negative. So it must be alpha minus beta, not beta minus alpha. It is always a positive number. Okay. This is only necessary when statically indeterminate then only we need to check this so statically determinate then finish here statically indeterminate have to add this final part what is the degree of statical indeterminacy so for degree for example i alpha is 4 beta is 3 equal to 1 okay so that is the additional answer that you need to provide and this degree you don't write this degree yeah? okay it is nothing to do with the degree. It is only saying that what is the equation which is not enough. You need four equilibrium equation to solve this problem. You don't have enough. You need one extra. So this degree, don't put the degree there. This is nothing to do with the degree. Okay? So that is the thing. Okay. So now later we are going to go to one example how to check this and specifically if there are hinges with hinges and without hinges you have to take note if there are hinges what you should do so later we will come to that part i will point out again so this is one of the things that you should know and you are expected to know and you will be asked in the your trust yeah, in your trust topic also Proxia also cover degree of statical determinacy or indeter which you have to check for the thrust problem. M plus R check with 2J, so there are also the same thing, but it's specific for thrust problem. So that is the first thing that you need to know. Okay. And uh, because this whiteboard is not big enough, I have to sometimes I have to erase this, okay? But uh, because this is recorded, later you can refer to the recorded video again so the next thing that you are expected to know is mainly on analysis okay analysis so the first thing is checking the start the second one is analysis so analysis here means you need to determine reaction forces you need to determine or to calculate Reaction forces and then you have to draw shear force, bending moment, and for frame is axial force diagram. Like So the question, the main main part of the question will be testing your ability, understanding to do analysis. So analysis, uh, mainly there are two main parts, which is get the reaction forces, then get the internal forces, then draw the diagram. Okay, draw the diagram. So these are the things that I cover, and I cover mainly on two types of problem, which is beam, beam problems. And the next one is a frame problem. Okay. I don't know whether you can 
say until cannot not see me now. So you can see. Cannot, cannot see. Until where is the limit? Can you see this line? Class? Because I cannot, uh, I don't know where the limit seems to be able to. Are you lucky? Now, if you cannot, then I have to erase that part. Okay, we're in the bottom. So beam is, of course, uh, if you have um, something like this, then we have loading, maybe point load or maybe concentrated load. Then we have to get the reaction forces and to get also later the shear force, bending moment and draw. For frame example, it will be maybe like this, and then you have a beam support and it has to be... Okay. It must be statically determinate. It said we only concentrate on statically determinate frame, and then beam normally will have a uh, frame. Normally, you will have uh, loading in horizontal, vertical directions, and maybe also there are horizontal load. Maybe there are also point load. Okay. And the members are inclined okay. at certain angle either. So here we need to get reaction force here, also reaction forces. And then here after that, get the bending moment shear force for this pan, this pan, and this part, and then draw. This one, get the reaction forces at the support, and then draw, get the shear force, bending moment, and if actual force is needed for this part, for this part, and for this inclined part. And we combine them to get the shear force and bending moment. Okay. Then after that, another one is uh, that after we get the bending moment diagram is sketching sketch qualitative reflected shape, which means based on bending moment diagram, how the members will bend, uh, will deflect. So that is a qualitative deflected shape. So as a whole, these are the things that I cover and these are the things that will be asked for my part of the questions and one for beam and the other one for frame. So if any question, I think uh, you can ask, you can type for those online. Any one of you here, you can just uh, say hello to me. Hello, hello. And then, and then I will answer the question. Okay. Now, uh, let me go specifically to example to go through these things. Okay. Now, as this will be recorded, this one you will refer to again because the whiteboard is not big enough. I have to read this as we go along. Okay. Now, the example that I'm going to make use of is from the test given to you all. So, let me emphasize again on the question. And uh, this is the first one is a frame I'm going to make use of. So, Another thing, very important thing that I would like you all to be aware of is uh, uh, read the question, yeah, class. So these are some important things. Read the question. Read the questions. I think, uh, of course, um, questions will be given to you in wording form and also in diagram. So read the questions carefully, especially the values given and also the distance given so that you won't 
use the wrong value and wrong distance, uh, wrong length and wrong height. So read the questions carefully. Okay. So the first question I'm going to make use of is a frame example, which is there's an inclined member, there is a hinge here, and there is a horizontal member, and there's a vertical member at the same level of this. This is a pin support. Also, the type of support you can get from the questions, if it's a pin roller or fixed, or you can get it from the diagrams indicated. So normally pin is given in this in this way, pin, okay? Or sometimes pin is given something like this. So the question should make it clear to you the pin can also be indicated like this. Okay. Or in the triangle, which is connected to the base where, the, where it is supported. So make it clear, because if you are mixed up with the support, then the num number of reaction forces that you consider will be less, then it will affect all the answer that you are going to get. And this frame is subjected to this direction of loading also, please be clear, the loading on the frame can be horizontal, it can be vertical. In this example, it is vertical. Okay. It is important to, to get to know the direction of the distributor load, it is vertical or horizontal or perpendicular. Sometimes not necessary, it will be vertical. Sometimes if you give an example like this, then the load will be horizontal. It can also be the loading. So read the question, that's why the question can also look at the diagram. If it is perpendicular, then this is 90 degrees. So the calculations process, how we consider this will affect the solution. So if given like this, you go and consider this, then of course, totally, the answer will be wrong. So it is important, vertical in the question is stated in vertical direction. So that's why read the question is in vertical direction, meaning like this. Don't consider it to be not necessary all the time like this. Okay. It can be horizontal. Okay. So if it's horizontal, then con don't consider it as a perpendicular. Yeah, so that is the important thing. And the other one we have, here yeah, also this horizontal member, another vertical load. Okay. For those of you who are here, you have to use your own. This, huh? because, uh, because if I on the aircon, it is very noisy and then it will affect the, the, the volume. Then don't forget, uh, it's also given a point load here. So the point load is acting at one point. So sometimes we overlook this. So this is 25 kilonewton. This is given as 15 kilonewton per meter, this is given as 20 kilonewton per meter, okay? And the next thing will be the direction, the, direct, uh, the, the dimension, okay? So the dimensions, please take note of the dimension, whether it is horizontal dimensions, inclined dimensions, okay? Yeah? So here it is given as in, uh, directly horizontal and vertical directions, or the X and Y. And from which point to which point? This is 3.75 meter. This is 7.5 meter. So this one has to be picked up clearly when you read the questions. And as much as you can, when you, of course, when you show the solution process, please draw the diagram so that when I check the solution process, I know what do you mean by R, the symbol that you use. If you just use a symbol and then without diagram, I don't know, I don't know what that reaction forces in which direction. Okay. Now, 
the question here asks uh, determine the reaction forces on the later we will see also we extend to how to get the bending moment and shear force diagram and also actual force diagram but the first thing that we need to determine is the reaction forces when you want to get the reaction forces this is where you need to know the type of support so the type of support here is pin and pin so pin and pin how many reaction forces and in which direction we want to use that one we have to you have to draw the uh, free body diagram okay so now the free body diagram is important so this side this opposite side one one to use this to oh here yeah. okay. So free body diagram, yes, let's draw the free body diagram of this. So free body diagram is a diagram. You take away all the reaction, all the support symbol you replace with the reaction forces. So free body diagram here will be, this is a pin there, here, so free body diagram. Now, another thing that you have to pay attention will be uh, the what is the level of the support here? If the level of the support, they are the same level or different level. So read the questions, okay? So free body diagram, this is pin. So we can, we have a choice for inclined member, whether you put reaction force like this directly, horizontal or vertical. And I use a X, a Y, you can use R, A, uh, H, A whatever symbol, but if you draw a free body diagram, then I understand what does it mean. Then for the other reaction, for the other support, this is dy, dx. So the direction is up to us going up. It must be vertical one, horizontal one, vertical one, horizontal one. Okay. So this is the free body diagram. And of course, we have all this uh, loading here. And then we have this loading here, which is no, but but there is a point load here, twenty five. Okay. Now, class, when you want to determine reaction forces, even if the member is inclined, okay, to determine reaction forces, I think it will be easier if you indicate the reaction forces follow the vertical and horizontal directions. Follow the horizontal, vertical and horizontal directions. This is specially made for you, but the, the, the magnet is not working very well now, so this become inclined now. Okay. Not supposed to be inclined. Eh? Okay, this one, magnet is not working now. Now, some of you, I think, will choose the other way around, which is the other alternative is you don't have to do this, you follow this. You follow this, meaning that is this one, you follow this, and then this one is perpendicular. There are this possible way that you can use. But it will be easier to get reaction forces, especially moment, if you directly like this and like this, because to take moment at this point, this is just directly multiplied with this horizontal distance. This one, if passing through here, no moment. I'm going to take moment here, this just directly the vertical distance. Okay. So to get reaction forces at the first step, it will be easier if you just follow this. Although it is inclined, then you can do it vertical and horizontal to get reaction forces, just to avoid mistakes in the calculation of reaction Forces. Of course, as I mentioned just now, you can also put it the other way around. But if you put it the other way around here, which is follow this, so I get this AX prime, no? AY prime now, okay? And the other one, I put it like this AX prime. So the X and the y, I follow this. 
So it follows another coordinate system. So this one is up to you. If you are, uh, if you prefer this one, then you can use this. This one is is um, difficult, more more process to calculate in the steps of getting reaction forces. But later, when you get bending moment and shear force, this is helpful because when you get bending moment and shear force. This one already directly in this direction, so it will not cause shear. This one already in this direction, perpendicular, it will not cause actual force. That one is easier in that way. Okay, if you do it this way or this way, then when you want to get shear force and actual force in the inclined member, you have to get the component. You have to get the component of this. This will cause actual force, and it will also cause shear force because it has this component. The same thing like this. This one, calculating reaction forces is easier. But when you want to get shear force and also actual force, then this one will cause also both actual force and shear force. You need to get their component. So this one cause, depending on the angle that we have, and also need to get this component. Okay. So this one is the advantage and disadvantages of which one you choose to start with. The reaction forces to avoid mistake because reaction forces is the first step. If you make mistake in the reaction forces, when I mark your answer, so I have to Stop for a while and then drink coffee and then what marks to give you if your reaction force is wrong in the beginning. If your reaction forces is already wrong starting from the beginning, so all your shear force diagram, bending moment diagram, everything will be wrong. Okay. Then I am uh, very sad. What what marks to give you because everything wrong. Okay. So depending on the lecturer, they give you the marks on your Work, working process. And some lecturer might say you're wrong, then wrong. Okay. Because we are looking for answer. If your answer is wrong, means the reaction forces is very important to get it right. So to get the reaction forces right, to avoid mistake, it's better to use in the beginning this one. But then when to get the actual force and shear force, then need to get the component of this, need to get the component of this, and also for this, need to get this component and need to get this component. Okay. So that is one thing that uh, I would like to maybe make it clear to you all first. So now I'm going to make use of the calculations. I'm, the one I'm going to show you in this calculation will be, it will be, I put it the direction here in this way. A. Why? I follow this and then a x. I follow this. Okay. So let's try to calculate the reaction forces. So calculation of reaction forces, these are reaction forces. They are one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four reaction forces. So you need to have four equilibrium equation to calculate it. Hi. Now, let's try to solve this. Eh? Now, when, when you try to solve this, it's always good to look at the equilibrium equations. This is statically determinate. This is statically determinate. You can easily check this. Yeah, you can easily check this. If you want to do checking of statical determinacy, uh, the test, I didn't ask for that, but if we want to check. Check statistical determinacy, then what I what is expected is once you have the free body diagram. Okay. Your free body diagram just need to show the unknown forces. No need to ask, no need to indicate the for checking. Yeah? But there is a hinge here. So there is hinge here class. One of the things that important we need to consider the hinge. 
So to consider the hinge, meaning that we need to separate this into two at the hinge there, so it will become like this. This is the revision for you all. So here, the reaction force still remain there. Can you all see online class? I think is it already out of the whiteboard? You have to let me know. Yeah. Okay. Maybe already out. Okay. So this is the border. Then here, here you will have. I think whenever we have a pin, you have always reaction internal forces. There are two internal forces. Yeah. At the pin there, we have two internal forces. So after you draw this, important thing is to check statical determinacy for this. This this is the important one need to draw out and then indicate what is the alpha. Alpha is one, two, three, four, five, six. Beta is three. Each part you have three multiplied with two, you have two parts. So this is also six. So finally, don't stop there. You have to say because alpha alpha equal to beta, therefore this is statically theta in it. So this is uh, if if the question asks, if the question does not ask for that. You don't have to go through these steps. Just answer what the question wants. Because class, you must realize that you have limited time. And we have to consider that fact. So, so if the question does not ask you to check this, don't go and check this because you will spend extra time doing this. If the question does not ask for that, no need to go through this. Okay. So next, let's still go to the getting the reaction forces now. To get reaction forces, we use equilibrium equations. To use equilibrium equations, we, you have the choice. Equilibrium equation, basically, what you have is this, this, and summation of moment at certain point yeah, equal to zero. These, these are the three equilibrium equations that you have. Okay? Then the sequence that we want to use. It's up to up to us, up to you to choose. But we try to choose from this equilibrium equations by looking at the appropriate free body diagram. The one that will give you when you form the equilibrium equation, you can solve directly. You can solve directly one of the reaction forces that will save time. If you have to, if you try other choices, maybe at the end you can solve, but then you end up solving two unknowns. Sometimes you solve two unknowns. You need two equations. You might make mistake there. So try to find one equations where you can get directly from that equilibrium equations the one of the reaction forces directly. Okay. So here, if you take moment at this point or you take moment at this point, if you take moment at this point or you take moment at this point, then you have only one unknown reaction forces that you need to consider because this problem, this A and D, they are at the same level. If this A and D, this one a bit higher than different story. Okay. This one, because they are at the same level. So if you take moment, if you realize you take moment at this point, or you take moment at this point with the whole frame, then you get equilibrium equations where you can solve directly for AY, if you take moment at this point, or you take moment at this point, you solve directly for dy. Okay. So that is the things that you should take note of so that you are able to avoid unnecessary mistake. Okay. This is the border. This is the border with with Paribunta. After this, cannot see. To this border with Paribunta. Okay. This is border with Banabaru. Okay. After that, cannot see. 
Now, yes, don't talk too much, don't talk too much, cannot finish. So, I take summation of moment at point D equal zero. Summation of moment at point D equal to zero. So, then you can write down. So, let me write down the equilibrium equation first. So, you have to first we get to A, Y. Fifteen. So if we choose AY and AX to be horizontal like this, okay, then we, when we write down moment, especially moment equilibrium equation, is easy for us to, to get the moment equation for that. So here, this is the basic thing that you should be aware of, how to get moment due to point load. So you should be clear and we fix the direction as positive following this. So this one is, I hope you do not make that mistake. So this is uh, positive at to cause moment at point D. And this is coming from this. And the next one is coming from the 15 is also this direction. So here you don't need to indicate in the solution process. I just explained to you why this positive, this negative, and the last one is um, one. Okay. So normally, class, I think a uh, mistake is made when we consider distributed load. Yeah, point load. I think normally you do not have a uh, student do not have uh, much problem. Only distributed load. So distributed load. The moment equilibrium equations, you must have force multiplied with perpendicular distance. Force multiplied with perpendicular distance to the moment, to the point where you want to take moment. Okay, so this, this, this terms here is moment caused by this. Moment caused by this at point D. So how do we get how do we get this is you have to consider this. Consider the equivalent load of this. The equivalent load of this, which is 20, the vertical one, multiply with this length. Multiply with this length because this load is acting along this length. So you have to find this inclined length. So the inclined length will be given by this Pythagoras theorem. Just find the inclined length there. Okay. Then that is that gives you the total equivalent load to the distributed one. This red dotted one is 20 multiplied with the length. And moment, don't stop here. If you stop here, this is not moment. You have to multiply with perpendicular distance. So this perpendicular distance is for this until here, point D here. So the equivalent load is here, which is, and this one will be half of this because this is uniformly distributed. So this is acting halfway at that inclined member. And the perpendicular distance is this distance, perpendicular distance. Okay, not inclined because your load is like this. To get moment, it must be multiplied with perpendicular distance. In this case, the horizontal distance. So look at the dimension here. So 
This is half 3.7502 plus 7.5 is from there. So that's why we have this is the lever arm. So next we come to this. This one is easier because it is normally what we are dealing with. So again, moment will be this is the equivalent one. 15 multiplied with 7.5. That gives us the load first. Then this is moment equilibrium equation. Don't stop here. If you stop here, then this is not moment. Multiply with the perpendicular distance. The perpendicular distance 7.5 over 2 is because we have this and then there. Have this here. So the perpendicular distance will be this distance. So it becomes 7.5 over 2, which is this point here. Then the direction will be like this, which is opposite to this. That's why negative. This one also, this causing moment like this, which is opposite to this. That's why you have negative. So this part and this part class don't make, don't make mistake because this will surely affect your reaction process. So after you have settled with this, so this is only AY, so you need DY and AX, DX, AY, DY some more. Okay. So what to do? What we need now is you take away this, I don't need it. Okay. So once you have this, so the next one is we can choose suitable. See, if I choose summation of forces in y direction, yeah, the y direction here equal to zero, and I consider going up as positive, so I can get dy. dy plus ay minus 15 times 7.5 then minus 20 right now multiply with the inclined length so this is forces so equal to zero okay. so from here we get dy equal to 119.62. So this is to get AY and DY. Now you have to get AX and DX if you need to find all the reaction forces to so find AX and DX. So to find AX and DX, okay, by referring to that diagram, we have to make use of the hinge now. Whenever there is a problem with the hinge, we need to make use of the three body diagram where you separate, you separate the structure into two parts at the hinge there. So once we have this, the next one that we can uh, proceed with is I have to erase this class, okay? Don't have a... It is recorded, that's why you can refer. So now the next thing that we want to consider is we take, make use of this part only, which is... We make use of this part only, which is okay. so here we are going to have already separated so summation of moment okay 
not the whole frame, but part of the frame only. We already separated out. Okay. At B. So if you take moment at B, then this one already calculated, then we can get this AX. Now here, you have to be clear what you want to calculate class is reaction forces. What you want to calculate is this. You don't need this, okay? You don't need that. So don't take moment at A. Yeah? You take moment at A, of course you cannot find AX, you find other, you find other BX, BY, but you don't need that. What you want is, what are the forces that you want to calculate? Be clear about that so that you don't spend unnecessary time trying to get reaction, uh, trying to get unknown forces which you do not need. Okay. So in this case, we want to know AX because AY already calculated. So you take this. So by using this free body diagram, where you separate at hinge, where you already separate at the hinge there. Okay, so that is the difference between if you write without this means that you take the whole you take the whole thing. So now we only take part of it. So just to be clear, so again, you take positive moment this way. So. AX multiplied with 7.5, the distance here, plus 20 multiplied with 3.75 square plus 7.5 square. This gives us the equivalent load. Then multiply with the perpendicular distance to B. 3.75 over 2. Minus AY now. AY is just now we determine as 160.59. Then multiply with the perpendicular distance to point B, 3.75. Nothing else, make it equal to 0. So we get AX equal to. 7.3 assume okay so again here to take note right now you clear now this is uh, equivalent to plus b This, this point here is the load equivalent to this distributed load. Okay. So 20 is the intensity multiplied with this inclined length that is where this distributed load acting. That's why we find the inclined length and the perpendicular distance. Okay. Perpendicular distance because this is vertical. Don't get the perpendicular distance, which is equal to half of the inclined length. Yeah. Perpendicular distance for this load, which is vertical, will be the horizontal length here, from here to there, which is 3.75 over 2. It is not the length of the member over 2. Okay. The perpendicular distance of this horizontal is horizontal of this vertical load is the horizontal distance, which is half of this horizontal distance. So if you go and multiply with half of the length, this is not correct. Because that is not the perpendicular distance. So by now, you get AY, you get DY, you get AX. So the last one is DX. So to find the last one, so we can then use okay. you can then use a summation of F X now. So summation of F X F A 
dx plus dx. So this is referring to the whole frame now. Summation of fx equal to zero ax plus dx. So the only horizontal one is 25. So dx equal to negative 82 point. Okay. 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 Three eight point. Eight point three seven. Yeah. Then this one must be different. This one. We are use the wrong. This one. Yeah. This is very good. Uh, dx is negative or negative. Thank you. I will tell this CKK something wrong with this answer. Maybe too much this, uh, too much this, uh, how to say that, lion dance thing to become like that. In on views. Okay. Maybe I use the some, I change some of the values here. Okay. So now that, that is the. Okay. So now if I put the value here. These steps is uh, not necessary. You must draw this particular step, but it will be helpful for you to, to to look at what are the values that you should use when you calculate shear force and bending moment. Okay. This is from this direction, and dy is dy. I hope it's correct. Eh? One line twenty six one. Going up and then a y is So this is uh, the answer that we get. So this will be the, the first important part that you have to get it correct, because this is not the end of the questions. Then the question will ask you to get shear force and bending moment and axial force. So when you have to do that, so this part, you have to be clear and have to calculate fast. Now, Later, when we go to shear force and bending moment, you will see that you do not need all of these reaction forces. Okay. If you are asked to calculate all, then you can calculate all. But if you are asked to get the shear force and bending moment, then what you need is one side of this. One side of these reaction forces you need to calculate completely because your calculation of shear force bending moment can start from this side without without you necessary to calculate this one. If you can calculate either side, then you can start your bending moment shear force from this side. Then you need only one side, the reaction forces. But if the question asks to calculate all reaction forces, then you need all this. But if 
the question asks for draw the shear force and bending moment, then this is part of the process. You need to calculate for shear force and bending moment. You need to calculate the reaction at one of the either the left hand side or the right hand side, because if you know this, then you can draw a complete one. Or if you know these two, then you can draw complete one. Okay. So that is on the reaction force side. Okay. Let's stop here. First, the recording. If not, then the video will become very big video size. 